Hey guys, Mark here. I hope you're all doing well. In today's video, I want to talk to you about maintaining lacing needles. Lacing needles, like many other tools, can benefit from some maintenance. Now, in the case of the lacing needle, we're going to purely look at the cosmetics of it. The lacing needle shouldn't be sharp, and as such we don't need to resharpen it or anything like that. But we can do two things to make it look better. Clean it as well as polish it. Now, this specific needle is the Tandy Jumbo Lacing Needle. As it comes out of the box, it's not as clean or as polished as it can be. So we're going to take a look at how to improve the look of such a lacing needle, which can be a nice little addition for your collection. Even handmade lacing needles such as this one, which come very nicely polished out of the box, over time get a bit dirty or I should say a bit cloudy and scratched and we need to fix that if we want them to look top notch. So this is what this tutorial is going to cover. Now I know a few things about maintaining metals from maintaining my knives. I do a lot of knife sharpening as well as polishing, so I think I can transfer those skills into this video. The first step is going to be to clean our lacing needle. Now there are many substances that you can use for cleaning metals, but the one that's probably the most available is toothpaste. So what I do is I grab a piece of paper and apply some toothpaste on it. As you can see, at this stage all I'm doing is rubbing some toothpaste as well as my paper over the lacing needle and this already gives it a very nice shine. I'm going to keep doing this for a while until I get the shiniest lacing needle that I can get using the toothpaste as well as paper. After cleaning as well as polishing using my toothpaste, I already got a really nice look to my lacing needle. It already looks much better than it did out of the box. So this is the bare minimum that I would recommend doing to your lacing needles when you get them. Especially if you get the tandy ones. Now all toothpastes are not created equal. Some are a bit more abrasive and those are going to clean your lacing needles a lot better. It is mostly trial and error, but the point of this stage was just to remove any dirty spots as well as some metal that has gathered up on the lacing needle. The polishing part comes next. Next comes polishing. Basic polishing can be done with a scrap of leather, and all we do is we run that scrap of leather over the lacing needle and polish it up. This is going to make your lacing needle a bit shinier. As far as the leather for polishing your lacing needles is concerned, you will want to stick with vegetable tanned leather. There are many other types of leathers available, but vegetable tanned is what you want. This rough side or the flash side is going to do the polishing. Now, you can cut off a leather strap off of an old belt, but mass-produced belts often have too smooth of a surface for polishing. But if your belt has this rough surface, then it's good to go. Now, you can also buy small remnant bags, which are scrap bags of leather from Tandy Leather, for example. Those bags contain quite a bit of leather that you can use for polishing. It is affordable and you get quite a decent amount. So, vegetable tanned remnant bags are available from Tandy. So, these for example are the leather remnants available from Tandy Leather. You get these irregular pieces, which are quite appropriate for smaller projects as well as polishing.
For professional solutions, as well as the shiniest lacing needle that you can get, you will want to use a polishing substance. Usually we use these kinds of compounds. You can get them in a variety of different colors. This green one is very common. For best results though, I use the white polishing compound. I'm going to show you how to use it and show you the result after that. So what are these polishing compounds? Basically, they are abrasive material mixed with either wax or some sort of a fat. That enables the abrasive material to form into a nice shape like this. Now you have various polishing substances. This one, for example, is a bit more coarse than this one. This one is finer. Usually I would recommend using first a bit more of a coarser polishing compound and then switch to the finer one. So this will do your basic polishing with the compound and then the next one is going to give you the finishing touches. Now how do we use these kinds of polishing compounds? One thing that you can do is apply it to your leather like a crayon. Like this. The heat generated by the friction is going to apply the compound onto the leather. You could also use a heat gun in order to warm up the leather and this will enable you to fully saturate the leather. Now there are many vendors for these kinds of polishing compounds. I haven't tried them all, but the one that I like is the one from Silverline. Silverline is a company that produces these and what I like about them is they are very affordable and you get a nice big block. This kind of a block should last you a lifetime or at least a very long time. So Silverline is one that I would recommend. And as far as which ones to get, I would recommend getting the green one for your basic polishing and the white one for your advanced or finishing polishing. Now a small disclaimer here, I really can't tell you if this is the polishing compound for you. The thing is that some prefer some characteristics of a polishing compound and some the other. I haven't tested all the vendors and I really can't say which is the world's best polishing compound. But for me, the silver line works just fine. You're going to be able to find reviews that praise it or bash it. It's like that with anything, so keep that in mind. After applying my polishing compound, I again do the same thing. Keep rubbing until I get a mirror shine. You can see that I am removing metal away from the lacing needle and this is going to make it shinier as well as much smoother. So there is some utility to this. When you polish up a lacing needle, you're going to make it smoother and glide a bit easier through the cords. So after polishing for around 10 minutes, this is what I got. You can see that it has almost a mirror-like shine. Now the longer that you polish using the compound, the greater shine you're going to get on your lacing needle. So it is mostly a matter of your time investment. The more time you spend, the greater the result will be. Now naturally, it's not always practical to have the shiniest of lacing needles. But if you want to show off, or if you want your lacing needle to glide magically through your cords, then it may be worth the time. So if we take a look at the lacing needle that I used throughout this video, the first image here shows you the lacing needle out of the box without any cleaning or polishing. It looks a bit cloudy. 
The second image here shows you the lacing needle after I have done my basic cleaning using toothpaste. It is a lot shinier and smoother. The third image here shows you the lacing needle after polishing. It has a mirror-like shine. Guys, I hope that this video proves useful. Thank you for joining me and see you next time.